The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt. Summer is approaching fast. If you want to strengthen and tone your abs, the Flex Belt, which is FDA cleared, might just be for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your very own. The MMA Discussion Podcast is now available to listen to on iTunes, the Radio Podcast app Stitcher, which are both available for free to download on all smartphone devices. And we are also now currently available on SoundCloud as well for you SoundCloud users. And on this episode, we'll be joined by Bellator lightweight Marcin Held, who recently uh, submitted Alexander Sarnovsky at Bellator 136 by Nibar, and he holds a professional MMA record of 21-3, and three. and Held is also a gold medalist in grappling, uh, IBJJF Jiu-Jitsu European Champion in 2010, and he is known basically for his submission game. We'll be talking to him, and from there we will go on to preview UFC on Fox 15, which is headlined by Leona Machida versus Luke Rockhold. And our very special guest here joining us, Marcin Held. We appreciate all the time. Uh, Marcin, how are you doing today? Hi, I, I'm good, thank you. Of course, uh, my co-host Chris, how are you going? Um, we're glad to have you on. Very spectacular performance at Bellator 136. It was a great performance uh, against a very game opponent, not just in, in, in MMA per se, but also a, a, a fun fight, spectacular fight to watch. And uh, despite all his cre uh, credibility he had um, as a grappler, you still came out on top in uh, spectacular fashion, gaining the submission victory. Uh, we want to say first congratulations. And also, um, what were your thoughts about that fight, and what did you take away from it? Uh, thank you for your today, Sam. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> Sanowski was a really good opponent. He's a really good fighter. And when the Bellator uh, told me that uh, I have a chance uh, to fight with him. Uh, I was glad because uh, I knew that uh, uh, I have to fight with the best guy to, to, to be a champion, and uh, it was a good exam before the uh, championship fight. So I'm glad that I won uh, this fight and I passed the exam. <laughs> Well, also because of such a great performance, not only that, you have been on a very spectacular run. You've been undefeated for the last two years and have taken on many game opponents like Ryan Healy, Anderson, Pachuki, Pipple Ferreira, and uh, of course now Tiger Sarnofsky. Um, with this run, do you think this puts you next in line for a, an op a title opportunity against Will Brooks? And is that what you want next? Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, uh this fight was, uh, I had this fight with Sanaski just because uh, I, I was asking about it. The Bellator told me that the first in the line for the belt is the Dave Johnson. And they asked me if I want to uh, wait for for the title shot or if I want another another fight. So I, I said to them that uh, uh, give me give me different fight. And uh, yeah, and, and it it was the only reason I I had this fight with uh, with Sarnaski. So now when I won this fight, uh, I will have a title shot uh, for sure. Barcin, after you uh, won your fight at Belter 136, you called out Dave Jansen, who beat you about two years ago by decision. So you're saying you don't want Dave Jansen next. You want Will Brooks, right? Uh, I. I would prefer Dave Johnson because I was fighting with him and uh, it uh, would be. Uh, I, I would like uh, to have a rematch with him, but uh, but unfortunately he lost. I think uh, I think maybe if if this fight would be a few years ago when Dave was uh, younger, it would be uh, the result uh, with that, uh, with with uh, Will Brooks would be different, but but. For, for now, I will fight with Will Brooks, and it's also fine for, for, for me. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you seem like the most um, credited challenger as of right now, and I and I definitely see that fight being the the one that he, um, that will be uh, picked next for the lightweight title fight. Um, what did you think of the fight between Will Brooks and Dave Jensen? And is there anything about Will Brooks that you see that you could take particular advantage in in a, in a matchup against him next? Uh, I feel like 
like I said before in the interview after the fight, I think the Will, Will Brooks is really good, but he's not as good a uh, striker as uh, Sarnowski. Uh, so uh, I, I, I had. Uh, I wasn't in big trouble in the standing with uh, Sarnowski, so I think uh, we will be much better, e even better with the Will Brooks. Uh, his, the, the Will Brooks is he's, uh, also not the, as good grappler like, uh, like for example, Patrick Freire or Rich, Rich Clemente. So on the ground, uh, I think uh, I, I will have advanced, uh, advanced too. And so, so I'm not afraid of this fight, and uh, I, I, I know he's, he, he's really good, he's really solid in every uh, part, but uh, he's not, I, I think he's not as dangerous as uh, Sarnowski or Pitbull. Uh, how would you P deal P with Pitbull, the... Pitbull, Pitbull would uh, knock me down uh, in every... Uh, uh, would knock me down Sarnowski also. Uh, Rich Clemente would uh, submit me, and uh, uh, I'm not afraid about this from the uh, uh, Will Brooks. How would you deal with the wrestling of Will Brooks? Uh, I'm not sure, but if if uh, uh, if if he won't take me, take me down, I'm I don't mind. <laughs> he he can take me take me down. Uh, I will try uh, take him down and. I believe I can do this, but if not, I will fight uh, with him in a standing. Nice. Next uh, for um oh well go ahead Chris. Oh uh, yeah, just uh, talking about your grappling. I mean, I was looking you up. I see you started training in uh, jiu jitsu at uh, nine years old, and you were pulling youngest black belt at twenty one. I mean, just talk about how you got into grappling and your background in it. Yeah, like I said, uh, I started when I was nine. Uh, it, it was the beginning of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Poland. So, uh, my coach was uh, just starting, but, uh, but, but, but he, he, he had, he had a good, uh, he has a good teacher, and, uh, he, he also teach me uh, everything really well, really well. I trained a lot before I did uh, much more in the gi uh, but uh, when I start uh, MMA uh, professional uh, I, I, I I start to uh, more no gi now uh, when I'm preparing to the fight uh, I train most no gi does MMA a lot of wrestling but uh, every, every time after the fight, when I have uh, more time, when I have more, uh, yeah, w w when I have, when I don't have to be preparing to the fight, I put my uh, gear back and uh, I still uh, like do in a gear and uh, roll and even even compete in a comp on a competition. Is there? Um, I mean, obviously, you're you're a very uh, you're a top contender in Bellator right now, but um, do you still? Plan on competing outside of MMA in jiu-jitsu in the future, or is that on the breaks for now until you com until you uh, accomplish what you wish to accomplish in MMA? No, yeah, uh, of of course I I, I won't compete in uh, jiu-jitsu or well, in grappling or jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, ADCC uh, in uh, in Finland. No. Yeah, yeah, in Finland, yeah. I, I think about it, but uh, I'm still. Yeah, I, I have to see how my schedule will uh, will look on the uh, next few weeks. Uh, but but of course, I I won't compete if uh, if I will uh, if I I will not have a fight coming soon and uh, will be interesting competition. Uh, uh, I, I I will compete for sure. Uh, talking about your uh, just grappling again, just talking about all the accomplishments you had. You won a gold medal in um, IBJJF uh, Jiu Jitsu European Championships. You won a gold medal in Fila Grappling European Championships. You won a bronze at ADCC. You have all these accomplishments in grappling, and you're mostly known for your leg locks. And recently, you uh, had a match with Gary Tonin at Polaris, and 
you actually wound up getting heel hooked by him. What did you learn from that match, and what did you take from it? <laughs> that match with Gary Tonnant with uh, was um, more, more, more for for the fun. I, they they told me about uh, this fight uh, one one weeks before. Uh, oh, so wow. I had so yeah so so I, I had no time for preparation. Uh, it, it they they called to me and they ask uh, if I if I want to fight with Gary Tonon. I said yeah of course I it it it, it was I I had not uh, fight coming soon and I like 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 I said uh, every time when I don't have a fight coming soon I always want to compete. So they ask me I said oh yes of course I I can fight and. Uh, for, and uh, because I, I I knew that uh, for me uh, the most important is MMA for now, and uh, it was just for fun. Uh, so I don't care about the result. Of course, I I was trying to win this fight, but I know that the Gary Toner is doing. He, he do uh, grappling all the time. He he do grappling yeah. full time. I do MMA full time. So it's a different. Uh, Maybe if I would have uh, uh, two two months for preparation, this fight would look different. But I, I I'm not sad about it. Would you like to have a rematch with Gary anytime? Get back on the mat against him? Yeah, yes, of course. I would like to have a rematch, but I would need like at least one month for preparation, and it would be okay for me. Awesome. Do you um? He, you're very, very young in the sport still, but you're very experienced. I mean, you're only 23, and you still have, and you have a record that many people still can barely get going into their 30s. Um, do you like staying busy? I mean, you, you've obviously kept a kept a, a busy pace, and I mean, does that work for you? Do you like always keeping busy, keeping continuously competing, whether it's jujitsu or uh, MMA? I mean, do you do you like being able to keep this busy, basically? Yeah, I, yeah, of course I like it. It's is good to uh, is uh, really good to go to the training and train for something. For uh, when you have a competition or a fight coming soon, you want to go to the you you, you want to go to the uh, gym for on the training. You you know that you have to. Uh, you have a plan to do and uh, every, everything is easy. <laughs> so yeah, of, of course I like compete. Uh, in MMA and the grappling, uh, everything. I w even even before I started the uh, uh, MMA career, I I was competing a lot in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competition. Well, yeah, you were competing very young. I believe what you were 16, 17 when you were in your first MMA fight, correct? Yeah, 16. I was 16. Well, what got you into it? Like, uh, what about uh, M? Like, uh, basically, how did you start? What made you? What gave you the idea? Like, this is what I want to do. I'm good at it. I should, you know, focus on it. No, in the beginning I just I just went to start uh, to 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 try it, and uh, my my coach uh, find the uh, the promoter who, who who agreed to do this fight. My opponent was one uh, one years older than me, so the chance was similar, and we did it. And after after that, that I decided I won't do this. Uh, for a professional. Yeah, there's uh, there's actually been some rumors that I, uh, have been surfacing that you want to compete at featherweight also and drop down from 155 to 45. Is there any truth to that? Uh, no, for for now I don't want to do this. Uh, I I know if uh, I I know that I I, I could do this. Uh, I don't have a big problem with the weight, so. Uh, I think I I would uh, easy uh, cut uh, cut way to the, to to one forty five, but uh, for now I feel uh, good in one fifty five. So I, I think there is no point to 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 to, to, to change the category now. Yeah. Uh, what do you normally? What are you walking around that usually? Uh, in, in kilo. Kilograms, 70, 78, 78 kilo, kilograms. <laughs> I don't know how much. How, how much that's about one. Yeah, I gotta look it up. No, that's about 170. <laughs> yeah, 171, 172. Not that crazy. That's actually not bad. I mean, but that's. But, 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 but I, I have this weight without the special diet or something like that. 
I just, I'm just trying to eat healthy, but I, do, you know, some some fighters has this uh, when when they eat pizza or something like this, they go, uh, they they go uh, uh, up uh, right away. For me, I, I I'm trying to eat uh, healthy, but sometimes when I eat pizza or hamburger or something like this, it's no problem for me. I'm always around 78, 79 kilo. Oh, I yeah, you're, guarantee you're you that's man, because of how man. busy you are in the gym, I'm sure. <laughs> he's still 23. You have fast metabolism. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, maybe it's a reason. Well, I wanted to but ask I you... Think, uh, I, I, think, I, think when I, I think when I would uh, do the diet, uh, and uh, I would be like uh, 74, 75 kilo natural, and then I would cut uh, to one, uh, 45 pounds. Yeah, it seems like it would be an easy cut for you. Yeah, I, I, I think I can do this. Yeah, and you, plus you still got a lot of career time. You're still very fight young. and. Um, yeah, but like I said, I, I feel good in 155, so... Oh, of course, yeah. I, I, that, that, I think there is no point. Yeah, um, and to your point, you know, it's just that because you're still so fight young, you have all kinds of time to really make a, make a stake at 155, and then when the time is right, 145 will make sense, and you'll know when that is. Um, I wanted to ask also, you know, you fight at Gracie Bar, uh, Barra in, in Tai Chi in uh, Poland. Is there anywhere else that you train? Any other specific gym uh, that you train in? And, and where do you train mostly to also round out the rest of your game, if anywhere else? Uh, yeah, the, most of the time I train in my gym in Poland, but uh, is the, 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 the second, my, my, my the second main gym is the London Super in England. I... I spent a lot of time uh, there. I mean, uh, maybe not a lot of time, but uh, I did uh, camp before the fight. I think uh, two or three weeks before the fight, I, I I used to go there and train there. I learned uh, a lot from from the coach and from the guys from London Shoot Fighters, and I really like this gym, and I will uh, I, I will come back there, uh, and uh, until. Uh, and to, to, to last fight, I was preparing in Rufus Sports uh, in Milwaukee, and it was all, also really good uh, training camp. I, I had also really good training camp there. Uh, but uh, but but to this fight, I was preparing uh, completely in Poland. Because of the fact that you fought the last five years in America. Um, is there any gym out here in particular that you like to train at whenever you uh, come down here? Uh, that, like I said, the, the only gym I was training for, for, for longer was the uh, sports. And the, the training was really, uh, really nice there. And I, I had not the uh, uh, opportunity to try, uh, to try other gym. I was also in Pat, Pat Kuran gym in... Uh, in Crystal Lake, uh, there was also really good training and uh, really nice guys over there, but uh, n not for a longer time. I, uh, for a longer time, I, I was training only in uh, in Rufus Sports. Yeah, there was um, some controversy with Rufus Sport a little bit ago, about a year ago, maybe a little bit less. Uh, did you experience anything out of the ordinary there, and did you enjoy your time there, and who did you train with? Yeah. I, I, you, you mean, the, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean, and uh, I was surprised that uh, when, when I, when I heard about this because uh, I, I haven't seen nothing like this when I was there. The, every guys were, every guys was really nice, and there was, there was not, there was no problem. But, but I don't know what was before. Uh, a lot of yeah, I, I saw the information that a lot of people said something wrong uh, about this gym. But for me, everything was really good. The guys was nice and really helpful and everything. So, so I was surprised about what what other people uh, was saying about this gym. Yeah, I think we saw a pretty even split between people who were surprised and other people who weren't. So it was a bit of an odd situation. Yeah, it's maybe, maybe is that uh, maybe maybe someone uh, did something wrong to the to, to, to one guys and they they write something like this or no, however, or maybe.
maybe they treat the, the different way the fighters and uh, other uh, other guys. I, I I have no idea. I don't know. Like I, I can say just uh, to, to for for me for me. I I, I haven't seen uh, not, not, nothing wrong in this gym. Was there anybody there at Rufus Sport that you trained with specifically? Uh, no, maybe not specifically. I, I I was training with the uh, with 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 everybody, with everyone, everyone there. With Anthony Pettis, uh, Ben Asker, and Rick Glenn, and uh, Pascal Kraus. Yeah, I, I was training a lot of a lot with the Pascal Kraus. He he was there uh, when I was there last time, and uh, and other other guys in around my uh, category. Well, that's awesome. I mean, to train with such uh, talented guys like that, and of course, you already being yourself one of the most talented guys in the world. Um, we got to say uh, this real quick. I mean, you will now be fighting for the title pro probably soon. I mean, you seem like the most obvious contender next. And uh, should you win the title, are you looking forward to being able to fight guys uh, that you've fought in the past, such as Michael Chandler and, and Dave Jensen? Should you become champion? I will fight with uh, everyone who will try to uh, try to take 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 this belt from me. So, but but I, I don't think about it for now. Now now I have to uh, is I have to win this fight. Um, I, I have to win the belt. I'm not thinking about what what will be next. Awesome. But I'm also I also not think too much about with uh, who I will be fighting or something like this. All eyes on Will Brooks. I won't fight. I won't fight with the the best guy, and uh, and and that that that's it. And uh, if if I won't be a champion, if if I won't be uh, the best uh, in the world, I I have to fight with everybody. Awesome way of looking at it for sure. Take on all comers, and I, I'm glad you got your eyes set on uh with the belt. Um. Looking forward uh, to seeing you fight for the title, Chris. Anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah. I just uh, last question before we get out of here. I mean, just going back to your roots of grappling and getting into MMA so young, getting into grappling so young. What advice would you have for younger kids or younger people who want to get into jujitsu and compete or MMA and compete? Uh, what advice? I was, could we be, what, what advice for the for like y younger people want to get into MMA and compete professionally, or they want to get into jujitsu and compete. Yeah, I mean, uh, for uh, I I think the 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 good uh, the good way is do something uh, to do in MMA to ha to have something really good. Like uh, is uh, I think the the easiest uh, the. The best is uh, to have the, like good wrestling, good ground game, good uh, striking, or something like this. So, uh, in a young uh, age, uh, for me, I, I think it's better to be fo stay focused on the one part of the game, like on uh, on Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling or something like this, and then uh, start to uh, MMA because uh, yeah, I think it's the uh, no, yeah, yeah, I, I said, I said this, I, I said that, yeah. Just so, to basically so, keep the discipline before you go yeah, into everything else. Yeah, it's, 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 learn, learn good one part of the game. Compete a lot in a competition like wrestling competition, Brazilian jiu competition, whatever. Uh, be, be good at that and then go to the to, to the MMA. It's the, I think it's the best way. Awesome. Well, Marcin, we appreciate the time. Um, we appreciate the questions, the answers, everything. You've been an awesome guest, and uh, we're big fans, and we can't wait to see you get back in there, and probably it will be for the belt, and we can't wait to see you get in there and challenge for the, the Bellator lightweight title. Yeah, man, it was Thank great you. having you on. And uh, where, where can everyone find you on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, everything like that? Yeah, I have a Twitter. It's just a matching head. And I have, a, I have also the... Uh, fan page on my Facebook. Uh, this is also the the matching head. There is two. One is my private match, uh, uh, page, and the second one is the 
uh, my, my, my fan page. So everyone, yeah, you, you can contact me uh, on a Facebook is the, the easiest way. Awesome, man. We really do appreciate you ha having you on and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. Yes, Please. when the fight gets announced, we'd love to have you on again. And that was Marcin Held, not too shabby. <laughs> Chris, good, uh, we are, what, is, what episode is this, our 34th now? 34. Man, remember when we just got started uh, back up in the last fall. Now we're at 34. Seems like time yeah, flies. Yeah. We got a crazy weekend going on. UFC on Fox 15, one of the most anticipated cards of the year. Marred, but not marred by the fact that Yoel Romero was taken off of the card, replaced by Chris Camozzi. Very, very um, odd replacement. And uh, <laughs> now we get to ch talk about it. But, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, he was the only guy initially that came up and said, hey, I'll take the guy on on six days' notice. You know what I mean? So, um, I get it. You know, if, if if he's the only one that could say yes to it, then yeah, I mean, if it keeps Jock around the card, it's kind of necessary. For anybody that bought their tickets, wanted to go see it, I'm sure the UFC treated it as as such. And so, you know, Jock remains on the card. It's just weird, you know, because it felt like a little, it felt like you had four of the best guys all vying for an opportunity for the next shot at the belt. But say Jock wins, you know, what what's next for him you know i mean i think it's all a, a matter of you know um how he wins or how machida rockhold goes you know if it's like a if it's a stinker or if machida wins in a not so exciting fashion or so maybe jacare is next you know what i mean it's uh it's very odd for sure it's, yeah, it would be weird for him to go and be next after a win over kamozi who you already beat by first round submission so yeah yeah that's a little odd but i think if um I don't know if Machida wins. I don't know if he'll get the shot. But if Rockhold wins, um, it looks like more certain now that he'll get the shot now that uh, Raul Romero's off the card. Yeah. I, I could see that if Rockhold wins, um, he probably gets the next shot, you know, over Jacare, which I wouldn't I say was fair. I would say this. If Jacare beat Yoel and Luke, and Luke beat um, Machida, that would be like the harder thing to really pick. But since oh, Yoel's off the card, it would make it would seem like it would seem like more sense if Machida if Luke beats Machida and gets a title shot despite Jacare winning if he beats Chris. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And um, what I think uh, could have been an option because they added uh, OSP versus Pat Cummins to the card and put it on the prelims. But I mean, it wouldn't have helped the card any much. But if they wanted to take Jacare very often save him for a later date they could have upped that card to the main card and look to put something else on the prelim that would have get, that would have been a good uh yeah I, I could see that fight being the one that should that could have been promoted if jacare necessarily had to be taken yeah, off the card might, you know? maybe not as co-main event but it could have been somewhere on the main card oh definitely yeah i mean i'd rather i don't even understand why uh jacare versus Kamozi is in the co-main event slot right now it's still there. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's because it's Jacare. It's more so because it's the same yeah. reason Quentin Rampage was the co-main in 186 when he was. And there's yeah. a reason that it's not anymore. So they take him off. Now the the co-main of 186 is Bisping Dalloway. So. Yeah, I mean, another option they had, which it seemed like Bisping was interested in the Jacare fight, they could have gave Bisping Jacare and then uh, matched Dalloway up with uh, Kamozi if they would have had it. But that's probably... A lot of work to get all those guys to agree to that. For sure. So with that being said, it's gonna be an awesome car coming up. Before we talk about that though, let's talk about something else that got uh, that hit the news today. Um, our our press time on the fifteenth here. Um, Phil Davis has officially signed with Bellator. Big news for uh for the former UFC fighter now. Um, I I knew about this. I knew that after his fight with Ryan Bader, he was um. He was essentially a free agent. Now, generally, when a fighter finishes off their contract, the UFC, like with 95% of the guys that they want to keep, um, they they offer them a, a, a another contract. Probably sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's not. Maybe if they're still losing but the UFC is still interested in keeping them, they'll offer them a better contract, the same contract or a worse contract. What From from what I can see here is that either – contract? Huh? A worse contract? Yeah, that. <laughs> a worse. A worse no, contract. Worse. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. 
Anyway. Dude, Worcester is not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> a worse contract. <laughs> what could have been the possibility here is um, Phil Davis either was offered a worse contract <laughs> or uh, the same, and Phil might have just said, okay, look, Maybe let me see what else is out there for me. Let me test the free waters um, until I decide to sign this contract the UFC is offering me. Sure, and of course, whenever uh, another promotion wants to do that, he has to just like the he has to disclose what the UFC is offering them. And um, it would seem Bellator either offered a better or the same. I would doubt it was the same if he wanted to. So I would think that they offered him a better contract in which the UFC had the opportunity right then and there, knowing about it, to either improve the contract they were already offering Phil or just say, okay, you take that one, you can go. So, um, And I don't know which one it was. Phil hasn't disclosed that yet. Um, he's just only disclosed the fact that it's it's true. There's no rumors anymore. He is a Bellator light heavyweight now. And um, that's big news. I think he does really well there. I mean, I, I feel like he was, he was still a, a, a top 10 light heavyweight. I always felt that, you know what I mean? Oh, and so, um, you know, to get one of the top 10 guys at light heavyweight and ship him over to Bellator, I feel like he makes some moves over there, you know, and uh, maybe some interesting matchups like him and King Mo or, um, you know, say Rampage does have to fight for Bellator and loses that case and decides to fight for, or decides he has to fight for them. And that fight could still uh, hold intrigue, him and Tito even, um, you know, a lot of particular matchups he could have over there i mean what what would be most exciting for you to see him over there um i don't know what would be most exciting considering phil davis is the most exciting <laughs> but, um, yeah no i think it was a. Uh, I i mean on bellator's part i'm sure they offered him a pretty good sum of money to come over there they get a top top, top light heavyweight band a little bit more depth that division again phil davis isn't the most exciting guy but he is a top guy and he um in mixed martial arts in the 205 pound division so it's a good ad and um yeah there's a lot of matches they can give him to start i don't know if they'll like throw him to the wolves right away and give him like a king mo or, or, or a rampage if he has to fight there again or anyone like that but i'm sure they'll give him someone good to go in there get a win and then i mean i can see him beating everyone in that division and being champion i'm just not sure if phil davis is the guy you want as your champion at light heavyweight he is a good personality it's just that his fighting style isn't the most exciting so you get what you paid for then that one i mean um i certainly that, let me say this i think that phil davis is an exciting fighter and i but only when he is dominating like oh yeah I mean, like, like like his fights cool. prior to ever like i'll say this if you look at his record he was submitting guys left and right prior to really fighting top-notch competition. Like uh, Wagner Prada is like the best uh, best example, in my opinion, where he just ragged all the dude, took him down, get put him in a submission that's rarely ever seen in an anaconda. Um, you know, he's a very skilled fighter. Um, never been finished even. Um, and, uh, you know, just like I said, before he started hitting top competition, he was – dominating everybody you know be, yeah, he beat gustafson he stan noguera bosch um yeah, in exciting fashion guys pretty handily i think mm -hmm. with bellator over there they're not going to be as good of competition so we could see him do that again yeah i think it, it's an improvement for him in the sense that i think yeah i think his skill level is good enough to where he goes there not only does he do good but he actually starts becoming an exciting fighter again because Let's be real. He's not fighting the best fighters in the world. Uh, light heavyweight and heavyweight are not the deepest divisions Bellator has, you know. So um, I, I believe that you know he'll go there and he'll dominate and he'll be exciting and he'll be fun to watch over there. I believe. So I I think it, it overall in the end it's a good move for Phil. Make some money, probably get some more fans if if he can perform the way that I kind of am expecting him to. Um, you know. So I, I, overall, I think it's a good move for him. What about you? Yeah, I, I think I could see him. I mean, it's a good move, obviously. He's making more money. He has a chance where um, the division not that deep here. It wasn't in the UFC either, but he wasn't able to beat the top 
like the best of the best guys over there. He beat mo- a lot of guys who were right below that, right in that like top five area. But mm-hmm. he probably wasn't ever going to be UFC champion. But I could see him being a Bellator champion. And um, I think a good matchup. They could make him eventually. They could probably put him against Emmanuel Newton sometime in the future. That would be fun. Yeah, that's another one I was thinking of. And it would be exciting to see him fight Liam McGarry. I mean, even against wrestlers, Liam is a very exciting fighter to watch. So. Yeah, definitely. Overall, I think Beltor made a good move, got a good pick up here. And uh, we'll see how he does in the future for sure. With that being said, we also have the news that, unfortunately, uh, it would seem that Nate Diaz, Matt Brown fight is off. And this is all based off of a, a tweet and Nate Diaz's words. So it's not been officialized yet, I guess you could say. Um, but uh, Nate Diaz was recently on the uh, MMA Hour uh, show and stated specifically that he feels like he's being strong-armed into this fight due to him not uh, officially agreeing to the fight, not that he turned it down per se, but that he was ta- he was told that that was a, an, an option that the UFC was looking for him to go on up. Um, he never stated specifically whether it was his idea or the UFC's to go to 170. Um, and but he did say that that he thinks that's a great fight and that everybody would want to see it. Um, but he says he he even he, he never disclosed that he wanted to accept the fight or that he already or that he ever signed a, a contract for it. So the UFC, he's saying the UFC put out that the fight was official when it wasn't, according to him. So I mean uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man, I have a hard time believing much of what Nate Diaz says. <laughs> I mean, right when they announced his Matt Brown fight, he said, nah, I'm fighting Anthony Pettis. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. He just, he'll say things, and he'll just be trolling everyone. So, I'm not sure. I'll wait till we hear official news from, like, the UFC or something till, until we actually consider it for news. But Nick Diaz, I mean, he'll say shit that, like, isn't true at all. And he'll be like, yeah, I'm fighting the champion next after he lost three straight fights. So, I mean... I take it with a grain of salt, everything he says. I mean, I would be disappointed if that fight was off, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. What do you think for Nate Diaz? Do you think that he um, should go to 170, or should he stay at 155? I think he should. I mean, he's fought a lot of guys at 55, so it's tough. And he's he, uh, beat and lost to a lot of the tough guys there, but I think there's still matchups for him at 55, and... I don't think he's a big enough dude to be going up to 170 and taking on the top guys in the division. So if he wants to fight top guys, I think he got to stay at 155. Definitely, I agree. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind him going to 170 for one-off matchups, especially against guys like Matt Brown um, or lower ranked. You yeah, know what I mean? I um, but I agree. I don't think he takes on the top. I mean, when he fought Rory McDonald, you could just see such a significant size difference, even for Diaz, which he's generally the guy with the size advantage. Um, not necessarily the strength advantage, but obviously he's, no, he's always a tall, bigger guy. Yeah. yeah, he's tall. Um, but man, I mean, Rory's around the same height, but is obviously much bigger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. guys like Rory are walking around like 200 pounds, and then we have Nate Diaz who's probably not walking around anywhere over 180. I wouldn't think. Yeah, it was so. I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him at 170 just to you know for one-off fights. But yeah, I think 155 is where he should stay. I know he's always uh, been bugged about the weight cut. He has a hard time with it, which I can understand. He's a skinny dude, you know. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what, but I would like to see that fight. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And it's like, you know, it's not too bad. But that to that, that would be a crazy fight to have to uh, add it to already, an already great card in 189. So, uh, Who would you give uh, Nate Diaz if he stayed at 55? If he stayed at 55. Fuck, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I was actually curious to see how he'd do against Miles Jury. Um, just, to, just I don't know. Would have been it a decent fight. Uh, Pettis versus Jury. Well, I mean, I would have been okay with that one too. I mean, those that 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 has like a story behind it. The guys obviously oh, don't yeah, like I each other. Yeah, I definitely would have liked to see that fight. But um. You mean? Oh, oh. By the way, yeah, we haven't even announced that. But UFC on Fox 16 going down July 27th or 25th. I mean, sorry. Uh, the main event. Rescheduled TJ Dillashaw versus Henan Barrow two going down as the main event. Co-main event will be Anthony Pettis versus Miles Jury, and um, 
And also added to the card, Misha Tate versus Jessica I. That's already a great main card without the fourth fight already. So that's a great Fox card. And uh, what a way to give back to fans after initially going to put it on pay-per-view, but I guess making up for it and putting it on a free card. Um, hopefully that fight stays healthy. And Wait, what? Uh, no, before we uh, go on to that, as for Nate Diaz at 55, I would have liked to see him uh, take on Bobby Green. Bobby Green, yeah. I mean, uh, Nate is barely in the top 15 still, so it's just like you know, yeah, I would want, I wouldn't want to see him fight anybody too high ranked right now, especially after coming off against the loss of the now current champ. You know, it kind of puts that loss in perspective, but still, I mean, it's just we got to see where he's at at this point. You know, he hasn't fought too often, and that's because of his own personal dealings with the UFC that he still is trying to figure out. You know, um, which I get. In the, in the sense that I don't believe he gets paid too well. <laughs> I believe he's like one of the worst paid guys for being in the UFC as long as he's been in there. Guys like Glayson Tebow and guys like, uh, you know, uh, well, there's an, even Gray Maynard. They get paid better than him, and I don't even believe. Yeah, we also have to remember that's disclosed pay. It's disclosed, but, I mean, I can understand why he's upset about that horrible pay. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't know what he gets paid outside of that undisclosed, so you never know. I mean, Well, are you saying that undisclosed money is more money than he gets with disclosed? I don't know. I, I mean, I can't say that because I don't know. Well, I'm just I, I'm I'm just going to go off the money that I do see, you know. I mean, they can say that there's money that they get all they want, but from what we see, when you see, you know, they, it doesn't matter what money's getting under the table. It's a matter of what he's getting paid uh, in the public eye. What's the what's the real pay that he gets paid to show up and fight? Other than anything else, to, including sponsors, including his own, uh, including his own promotion of the brand. Other than all that stuff, what he gets that disclosed pay is what he gets paid to show up and fight. And the other part of it is if he wins. And when he shows up, he gets paid horribly. <laughs> Yeah, I think he gets paid something like 16 and 16 or even less than Yeah, that. he got paid. He was supposed to get paid 30 and 30 against uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, who ended up getting paid 40 and 40. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But because he gave up a percentage of it due to missing weight, which I get, but so he got paid 26 and that's it. But for a guy that's fought as long as he's fought, especially when he first he, – he was making way more money when he first got to the UFC because each ultimate fighter contract is a six-figure contract. So, it, he ended up getting worse contracts as time progressed, you know? And so, um, I, I just feel like that's a... Uh, I mean, he's always been able to kind of pack that bank with uh, with a lot of fight night bonuses that he's collected. He's collected quite a few of them uh, over the years. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just, you know, I, I just... Believe, for as long as he's been around, for that to be his standard pay right now, it's just bad. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I would blame his management or, blame, you know, whoever said it was okay for him to just get paid that much. He should know that he shouldn't get paid. I mean, he does know that, you know. Um, and so, you know, I mean, he just fought the, the now champion. And even then, when Rafael wasn't the champion, he was still getting paid more. And Rafael certainly hasn't been in the UFC as long as Nate Diaz had. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just I just think, you know, he's just, he just seems like one of the worst paid guys. And, and I don't see what it is outside of the UFC, what the undisclosed pay is that could still be helping him get more money than most of these guys around. You know what I mean? Especially because he's such a big name and, uh, you know, such a uh, such a fan favorite, such a, such a you know, I mean, and, and in, in the top five Fox cards that there have been in, that there have been with viewers, top viewer viewerships, you know, um, he's been a part of two of them. So, I you know. It, it, it's obvious that you know you put them on a card, you're gonna get views. So I, I don't know. It's just me. I just think that he doesn't get paid too well, and I hope that fight does happen. Nate Diaz and Matt Brown. If it doesn't, then at lightweight, I I don't know. I would like to see him fight. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Joe Lozon just for fun, for kicks and giggles. But for kicks and giggles. Yeah, well, that'd be a fun fight. Would it yeah. not to you? Yeah. Um. Or I don't know. I mean, he's already... I'm looking at names just to see who he could fight. I certainly wouldn't want to see him fight anybody in the top five right now, top ten. He's already beaten Jim Miller, right? And so, I don't know. It's just, for me, it's a matter of 
knowing who he should fight next. Actually, you know what? I know perfectly now who I would like to see him fight. I'd actually like to see him fight. Um, and it would be a huge opportunity for him, but it would be uh, Carlos Diego Ferreira. That'd be a great fight. Ferreira being such an expert ground uh, ground fighter. Um, Diaz, I would I would feel, would certainly have the striking advantage. Um, but I just think overall that'd be a fun fight to watch. Um, yeah, that would be cool. I mean, in, I I think I prefer your Lozon pick to that one just because they're both names and they go out there and fight. So, I mean... I, yeah, Ferreira's a good fight. I just think uh, Lozon would be a bit uh, more realistic. Yeah, I'm I'm a big Ferreira fan. His ground game is, is something else, man. It's just, yeah, if just he could get that striking to be as good as his ground game is, he'd be one of the best fighters in the world. I don't think Nate would want to fight him. Huh? I don't think Nate would fight him. Oh, I, I believe you, for sure. You know, I'm just saying. If there's a fight that I could pick. Realistically, yeah, I think the Joe Lozon fight is, is a better fight to take. Um, so... Whatever happens next for Nate, I just hope it's a decent fight, and I hope the you know he gets starts starts getting paid better. I know he still has to finish out the rest of his contract, which I believe is either one or two more fights. So um, once he finishes that off, if he could do it on two wins, hopefully he gets a better contract after that. Um, I know JP Jonas wants to come on and say something about it, but we'll have him on on Sunday to talk about it because me and him are actually have very different views on the whole Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz situation. So when we can, we'll talk about it. But how about we start? I think that's it. And now we can preview UFC on Fox 15. And gosh, what a card. I mean, from top to bottom, I recognize everybody. You know what I mean? So I think it'll be a very, very fun card. Which, which fight are you most looking forward to on this card? Uh, I think it's got to be the main event just because – it's going to be, I mean, I don't know. With Machida, it's odd. Some of his fights are really exciting, and then you'll have some where he's just uh, moving around a lot, staying back and being a little bit tentative and looking for his uh, opening. But this fight's good. I mean, if Rockhold wins, it's a very good shot. He gets a shot at uh, Weidman. And I don't know. A lot of people think Rockhold's the guy who might be able to beat Weidman. So it should be interesting to see that. And, uh, Aside from that, I'm looking forward to Swanson versus Holloway a lot. That should be fun no matter what. Yeah. It would be. What would be interesting, I could see Machida getting a title shot if he wins in impressive fashion and Vitor beats Wyden. Then I think that Machida would oh, get yeah. a title shot. If, if, yeah, if Vitor wins. Yeah. I mean, us personally, I don't believe Weidman loses to beat Vitor. I know you feel the same. Yeah, but, uh, but that is a possibility. It could happen. You never know. Especially with Vitor, you never know. And uh, I'm sure, you know, as as well as this, if Jacare wins, beats Kamozi, I wouldn't be surprised, and Rockhold beats Machida, I wouldn't be surprised if Jacare gets it and Vitor, and Vitor wins. Because then Jacare versus Vitor is kind of way more sellable of a title fight than Vitor versus Rockhold when Rockhold has already lost to Vitor. There's a lot of politics involved. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I guess it, it just depends on who wins what. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely like to see Rockhold versus Wyden, though. Very much so, yeah. I mean, me too. Especially because many people have been telling me that Rockhold beats Wyden. For my own personal reasons, I don't think. You know, for my own personal assessment of these two guys, I don't see Wyden losing to Rockhold. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, Rockhold definitely give him a fight. Oh, for sure. I mean, all of these guys can really give, you know, Jacare, Romero, uh, Machida, Rocco, all those guys could give either Vitor or Wyden a fight. The w middleweight division is just, ugh, it's madness and I love it, you know, so it's it's great. It's all, you know, it's it's all where it needs to be, and this is exciting no matter what, regardless of you all being taken off. It, it should be very interesting. It would be also very interesting if Kamozi happened to pull an upset of the year. <laughs> like I've been saying, man, th this year has been ridden with upsets, and, and it's made the, the, the fight game very exciting these days, you know. Um, so with that being said, we'll start from the uh, from the bottom of the card because, I mean, there really isn't a fight around that we see that that doesn't look exciting, at least in some degree. Chris Dempsey, Ed Gordon, Diego Brandau, H Jimmy Hedis. Tim Means versus George Sullivan. Those will be the three fights on the UFC Fight Pass uh, card. Yeah, they're good for Fight Pass. Fight those pass. are good for Fight Passes, right? Yeah, they're I mean, good for Fight Pass. Definitely. For sure. For sure. I mean, uh, Ed Gordon having to come off that loss to Josh Salmon, that crazy head kick, if you remember, yeah. from last December. Take the on fight he was winning. 
Yeah, I believe he was winning that. I mean, he was using effective grappling to take the first round, and then in the, the second round, it was just a, more of a trade off in the grappling and striking department. And then Salmon just bam finds that that uh, that great win. Uh, I believe uh, Dempsey himself is also coming off a loss to Alir Fatifi Latifi. Um, so both men really needing to get in there and uh, you know show what's what. So um, and then Jimmy Hedis versus Diego Brandao. That fight has been rescheduled i think a number of times at least two or so um twice yeah twice so now you know at this point hopefully we finally see it uh thus far i mean the last time it was rescheduled it was because of at weigh-ins it just couldn't uh, jimmy had got six so hopefully uh both guys get good health and can make the fight tim means versus george sullivan tim means is always fun to watch um very exciting fighter um uh, George Sullivan, I'm, I believe, is a European fighter. I, I, I'm trying to remember what European card I last saw him on. Uh, let me look it up. I don't know. I need, I'm trying to guess. Oh, okay. Igor Arahu again at the Fight Night 51, Arlovsky versus Bigfoot. That was the one. That was the last time he fought, so it's been a while for him. And so, oh, actually, it's been since September. Not too crazy. Those are all. Those are all really. I mean, that just shows you how good this fight card should be. And we move on to the televised prelims. Uh, Al Jermaine Sterling from uh, from NYC over at uh, Ray Longo is taking on Taki, uh, Takea Mizugaki. Now, wow, uh, I really like this fight. Uh, Al Jermaine Sterling has really impressed me as of late, and uh, I've become a big fan. That, that win over uh, Hugo Vienna really uh, did it for me. I, I thought that was a great fight. So um, uh, he's been out due to injury. He had a fight scheduled not too long ago and then got injured, and now he's back in there. So... Taking on a guy like Takei Mizugaki is a huge step up from Vienna, though. So, I mean, this is going to be a tough yeah, fight. A huge fight. How do you see this fight going? Uh, it's a huge fight for him. I mean, this is the number six ring guy at 135. So, a win here, I mean, that bolts him right up into the top ten, I'm sure. Um, yeah, Sterling, we haven't really seen many weaknesses from him. We saw him beat uh, Cody Gibson by decision in a pretty good fight there. And then um, he TKO'd Vienna in the third round. Uh, he's mostly we've seen him as a submission guy. He does have good striking as well. So um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say because we haven't really seen him against that top level of competition yet. And I I'm I don't know for some reason I feel like Mizugaki he is a good fighter, but once a guy is like a little bit better than him, he's he gets outclassed completely. As in um, he lost to Cariasso. He got dominated by Dominic Cruz completely in his last fight, and he got. He got pretty hurt there, and even though that was in September, I mean, that that could cause some damage, and I think that was one of the few times, he, the second time he's been knocked out, so um, uh, I'm going to lean towards Sterling. I think he's a young guy. I think he's a really top-level up-and-comer. I think if he wins his fight, he'll be a contender in the division, so I'm going to go with Sterling, even though he lacks the experience. I haven't really seen him too much. I've seen him only fight twice, but I'll... Well, yeah, I'll go with, I'm assuming he's the underdog, so I'll go with the underdog. All right, I'm going to go for Takei Mizugaki. I like both guys. Sterling does seem to have that potential. I wouldn't be surprised in the least if he wins, you're right. But I, I see Mizugaki being able to hold tough, hang on to his uh, his ranking spot, and uh, and keep the cha and keep the young challenger at bay. I will say this, Sterling has quite an all-star in his uh, corner uh, right now. He's going to have Ray Longo and uh, Matt Serra both have a uh, bull both have said that they are going to be in Sterling's corner, and man, when um, you know they, they've they've certainly built up a great camp thus far. A, a lot of their fighters are doing very well, very successful. Um, so you know, if if uh, Sterling wins, man, I wouldn't be surprised in the least. But I got I got to go with Mizugaki. I got I got experience winning this one here. So we'll move on. John Vellante versus Corey Anderson, the tough winner who remains undefeated at five and zero. Yeah, we got another uh, Sarah Longo guy in there too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, so I mean, they're, they're gonna ha they're gonna be busy tonight, and hopefully they can put up some good numbers and wins. Uh, I remember, uh, was it Justin Jones, Corey Anderson last fought? I I can't look right now. I don't I think he's had a fight so. since. I believe that was his last fight. Yeah, and then of course he won uh, against Matt uh, Matt Van Buren in winning the Ultimate Fighter, so he's two and zero oh in. 5-0 altogether, going to fight John Vellante. Now, John Vellante is a, uh, of course, uh, a very, he's a, he's a powerhouse in my opinion. He's got a lot of stoppage victories, um, you know, and uh, I believe 
he's two and two in the UFC. I could be wrong. Uh, I know that he came from Strike Force, so yeah, you're right. Two and two, yeah. So I mean, uh, John Valente yeah, has a lot of for Cody Donovan and Sean O'Connell. Mm-hmm. And I mean, his losses have been to top guys. He lost to OSP and he lost to Fabio Maldonado. Mm, not bad. I mean, those are those are those are decent names in light heavyweight right now, and so uh, you know I can't can't fault him for that. But at the same time, you know if he can't beat them, who knows if if he's be able to beat an up and comer like Corey Anderson, who looks to to someday get there. You know, I, I wouldn't say Justin Jones' fight was his best performance. He certainly looked better in the house and and in his fights prior. So, but he's also very young. Um, he's gonna be fighting a guy near twenty pro fights. So it's uh, you know, I, it's hard to really count out experience here. What do you got? Oh, uh, I'm gonna go again go with inexperience and go Corey Anderson. <laughs> he's five and up. Oh, but um, yeah, we've seen Volante struggle in fights. I mean, Fabio Maldonado. I mean, he put a pretty good beating on him. Even though Volante, Volante, once he gets rocked a little bit, he looks like he has a bit of trouble coming back from it. And I mean, uh, Corey Anderson, yeah, I mean, he's a big dude. He looked um, not his best against Justin Jones, again, as you said, but uh, Justin Jones proved in his last fight that he's pretty good. And, um, yeah, uh, Corey Anderson, three of his fights, he's finished by TKO, and I think, and they've been the first round. So I think if he rocks Volante, Volante will have a bit trouble getting him down. And I think Jones is a little bit better. I, not Jones, Corey Anderson uh, might be a little bit better on the feet. So I think that will come into play, and we see Anderson get a win. I'll go with it. I actually want to – I think that Corey Anderson will take this one. I believe he's really good at, at following direction from, from Ray, from what I've seen. Whenever he is put in any kind of trouble, he takes direction from his coaches, and then he's never in that position again. I think he's a really coachable guy. I think, uh, you know, if Ray Longo and Matt Serra are, are, are up to par in coaching him through this fight, then if then if he takes direction properly, I think he'll find a way to win this fight. So I'm going to go with Corey. This is the one uh, Ray Longo guy I got right here. Sorry. <laughs> Are you going with Volante? No, I gotta go with Corey Anderson. Um, Corey this, Anderson yeah, I'm saying this is the one Ray Longo guy that I probably go for the, the, the rest. Anderson's of the not a Ray Longo guy. Volante is. Volante is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I guess I'll go against him then. <laughs> that Corey <laughs> Anderson was. No, Volante is uh, a sort of Longo guy. And uh, where's Anderson uh, train? I have no clue. <laughs> well, he's a very cultural guy himself then. I'll take that back. I mean, I've seen uh, Corey in the middle of fights get told by his coaches. I guess I maybe pictured Ray Longo being there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and uh, also when I look at Corey's stats, he has really good takedowns. and t- He has averages 8.43 takedowns. So that's in the UFC, so I mean, it doesn't mean too much. But still, he's a good grappler, and I don't think Volante is going to be able to get him down too easily. And I think Anderson will have the advantage on the feet. Cool. I'll go with that. That's my pick, though, Corey Anderson. <laughs> Sorry, Ray Longo. <laughs> I got it. Oh, man, this next fight is great. I love this fight. Pat Cummins versus Ovin St. Preux. This is an amazing fight. Go ahead and pick your winner here. Oh, you keep putting me on the spot. I, I want to hear. I, I need to know who you got. This is very interesting. Uh, this one's tough because uh, OSP definitely has a power advantage. I could see Cummins getting the fight to the mat, but I don't know if he'll be able to keep OSP down. That's the problem because on the feet – OSP definitely has the advantage. I mean, by far. But then okay. once a fight, once a fight gets to the ground, um, I don't know because I I could see OSP being able to get back to his feet and taking advantage of Cummins on the feet. Um, I think I would go with OSP, but he has lost to Ryan Bader, who has shown that he's been able to take him down. So ah, it's so tough. I. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with OSP, but I really wouldn't be surprised if Cummins surprises a lot of people and just takes him down and grinds this one out. It's not even a question to me. I have Patrick Cummins all the way. It's like I I really see him being able to take advantage of this fight, take it to the ground. I actually I'm not gonna say anything too crazy. I will say I think that his wrestling is up to par with Bader's in the sense that I've seen Cummins when he takes a guy to the ground, he's he's very good at you you usually attempting transitions. He at least tries to make the opponent work off of their back, not just trying to get up, but he makes them work at having to make sure that he stays in a singular position, that he stays where he's at, whether it's in the guard or in the half guard. He makes them work off their back to be defensive, not to just get up. And I think that that'll... He himself, uh, Cummins has fantastic defense. We saw when he uh, 
had the fight where he was getting they were going for heel hooks and everything. I forgot who that was against. Oh, uh, the that uh, uh what's his name? Pereira, Carlos. G- oh. You mean uh, was it his last fight? I think so. Yeah, against uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. That's a guy that yeah. won the Ultimate Fighter um in Brazil. Yeah, that fight, I mean, he was certainly fighting off submissions like they were nothing and kept the offense, won all three rounds, made it e- look easy. His, his his grappling is is certainly the highlight of his game, and uh, I, I believe if he takes OSP down and uh, and controls him down there, he's going to have an easy time getting getting the, the victory. I wouldn't even be surprised if he gets a finish. I mean, against uh, um, against Kyle, King, Kyle Kingsbury and Carlos Jr., he wasn't able to get it. Kyle Kingsbury is a tough dude, and Carlos kept threatening with submissions that he kept fighting off but kept maintaining offense. So um, he's looked really good. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to get a late late stoppage in this fight, whether it be by TKO or uh, or a very advantageous uh, submission. I wouldn't say he's a submission expert or anything. I don't think that he is. Um but I, I believe he'll be able to, to, to get the win very easy here. Now, again, you, you're correct in saying Ovin St. Prue has the uh, striking advantage, the power advantage in the hands, and being able to finish the fight. If Cummins can't get him to the ground early enough to where he uh, uh, does can't avoid getting hit, then he's going to be in trouble. But um, you never know. I mean, C- Cummins has a very, very decent level change uh, skill. He's able to really disguise his punches into, into takedowns. He doesn't just, you know – uh, as spars of them yeah. in the sense that he tries to go and drag them down to the ground like that. He always, you know, tries to make the opponent think of what he's doing. He hides behind his take. He hides the takedown behind his strikes very well. So I think that he'll be able to for sure get OSP down at least uh, once or twice in the in the fight, whether it be in the first or early rounds, or if Saint Prue is able to defend well against him if he's prepared. Um, I think still, no matter what, Cummins will be able to to, to eventually get the takedown and and steal two rounds in to get the victory. Yeah, I think uh, OSP learned a lot from that Bader fight. I think he'll come in a bit more prepared for the takedowns in this one. So that's uh, another reason why I'm going to go with him. I'm going to stick to it. But I really wouldn't be surprised if Cummins is able to get him down, keep him there, and grind it out. But I don't see him finishing. You and I are very, very split on these on these calls, man. We, I don't think we've agreed on one yet. <laughs> no, didn't, we, didn't you take uh, Corey Anderson? Oh, you picked Anderson? All right, I guess we're okay, one and two then. This nice one I am excited for. Now, Paul Felder was a great fight for Jim Miller, I will say, but Benil Dariush is one of these cases where I love the replacement more than I like the original fight. Um, Benil Dariush has been on such a tear these days and, and has won three straight, three finishes, three performance bonuses of the night's. And um and he'll be taking on Jim Miller and you know um Miller is the favorite in this fight but but Darius has just looked to be in such great shape lately and has done so well that I think he's got a lot of momentum coming into this fight. Most recently submitted um Darren Crookshank and uh Jim Miller uh is coming off. I I don't believe he's fought since he lost to Cerrone in that head kick knockout. Am I right? Uh no, he hasn't. Yeah, I thought so. Um, and see, so yeah, for me, uh, Darius is just, man, been on such a tear. I, I don't see him losing this one. He's of course, uh, he's of course always been a, a, an expert grappler, just like Miller is. But, um, you know, he's, he seemed to have picked, have picked up a lot of good striking skills as well. And, uh, if you saw his last fight, he was taking on a guy in Crookshank who's very skilled on the feet and still beating him there. Um, so for me, I, I got uh, Benil Dariush taking it probably by decision. I don't see him being able to finish Miller, but I see him being able to beat him everywhere. Man, we're going to have to disagree again. <laughs> I got to go with Jim Miller here. I mean, he's always been able to get the win against these grapplers. He's been able to, he's proven it against these high-level grapplers. He knee-barred Charles Oliveira. He beat, uh, arm-barred for Bricio Camoys. He beat Joe Lozon. I mean, this guy has proven against top-level grapplers in MMA. Uh-huh. He's been able to beat them. He beat uh-huh. Mark Bocek. So, I don't. Just from proven history, I'm gonna go with Jim Miller. I think he's good enough on the feet where uh, Darius won't put him in too much danger. And um, as for that, the grappling, I, I mean, Darius is probably the better grappler in terms of. Uh, I, I'm trying to look for the word. I can't think of it right now. I just I think jiu-jitsu, wrestling, he, offense, he, defense. What? No, no, not I'm not offense or defense. Just like in terms of accomplishment, oh, okay. Darius is probably the better grappler here. But Jim Miller has been able to prove himself against these top level grapplers, and I think he'll be able to find 
He's very tricky. Jim Miller's good off his back. He's good on the top in top games, so he's very tricky, and I think he'll be able to beat Darius. And he's also a pretty good wrestler, so I I could see him being able to beat Darius. I'm gonna pick Jim Miller by decision. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, Darius is just has since upped his game really well, and has recently in the last two years started training at uh, Rafael Cordero's gym at Kings MMA. So. You know, I just and he's got he's got a he's got a real prominent coach in his corner that's really made a name for himself not only last year but of course this year, um, and getting Verdum the title last year and also getting Rafael dos Anjos the title this year. So, uh, I, I gotta go with Cordero. I've been, I'm starting to get real high on that coach, and so I, I see him being able to coach Darius through this fight and get and get him prepped for for Miller, who's of course the, one of the toughest dudes. In the in the lightweight division and all of the UFC, so like yeah, I said, I don't see Darius finishing this fight, but I see him being able to control and beat him everywhere. Almost, I, I really mean, believe this, that this fight will definitely tell us where Darius is at. Oh, definitely. If, if he, he wins, wins this fight, this fight, oh man, yeah, that's a that's a huge win for him. But uh, again, it's also on short notice, so I think that might play a little bit of a factor too. Well, I mean, it, it's coming off of Darius, Darius beat Crookshank okay. at UFC yeah. 185, which was not, which was just barely a month ago, and he took the fight a week later. I believe he was still in fight shape. I think it works it, to Darius's advantage, coming right off a fight, not injured, not not hurt, already low on weight, doesn't have to worry about the weight cut as much, just has to train, prepare for the fight. <laughs> Uh, I think it works out to his advantage that that he took this fight uh, on the notice that he did, uh, coming off of the victory that he that he's coming off of. So I think it, I think that that works to the opposite. I think that works better for Darius. Right. Well, I guess we'll see. We will see. I got Darius decision. You heard it here, fight fans. That Jim Miller decision. <laughs> All right, we'll see. I like this one. I think I think uh, I like this one because this is going to I mean there's no way that fight will probably not be exciting. That fight is one of the ones to look out for um on this card. Uh one of many, honestly. So, we'll move on to the main card and this is another one of those fights that uh, that a lot of people will certainly have their eyes on for more reasons than one. Paige Van Zant finally coming back from her uh for her second UFC appearance against Felice Herrig. Same deal coming in for her second fight, but of course she's well known. Everybody knows who Felice Herrig is. Um, and Paige Van Zandt is certainly, of course, making a name for herself. Uh, in her debut, defeated uh, defeated Kaylin Curran in a in a very great fight. Uh, I, you know, it, she got performance of the night. It should have also gotten fight of the night. It was a great fight. Um, uh, and you know she's she's certainly an exciting fighter right now. I don't know where she's training right now though. She's always back and forth and everywhere. Um, I believe she actually went back to Team Alpha Male. Can we confirm that? Um, yeah, I believe she did. I've been seeing like pictures. Uh, a friend of mine from my gym who trained down in uh, Brooklyn with us, he recently got invited out to join Team Alpha Male, and he's been posting pictures, and Paige has been there, so I know that. Got you. So, you know, she's definitely got a good uh, camp and team in her corner. Uh, police obviously still staying at Team Curran. Uh, that's where she's been. Um for me, this fight, uh, I believe Felice is probably the better technical striker. Paige is probably the more aggressive fighter. Um, depends on how Paige wants to kind of take this fight. If she really wants to take Felice out of her element, certainly get, uh, moving forward and keeping a high pace and keeping her out of her comfort zone and uh, shutting down her striking is the best way to go. Felice has decent grappling. It's not the best uh, in this division, not by a long shot, but... Felice is great everywhere, for sure. Um, especially, she has improved on the on the ground. Uh, as we've seen in, in recent years, she started to get get uh, certain submission victories, especially in the house, and and uh, has looked great. So, for me, I, I see this is another one where I see experience being able to 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 shut down um, inexperience in the sense that you know I don't see Paige being able to be uh, be prepared for the for the all around great game that. Felice is going to have. So for me, I'm going to pick Felice Herrig by decision. What do you got? Yeah, I don't think this was... I think this is a very risky fight the UFC made for Paige because, I mean, she's an attractive girl. you got to say that. And they are going to want to be able to sell her as not. I mean, just from a promotional standpoint. And if she loses this fight, I don't know. I don't think it was the best way to go. I think they should have looked to match her against some other girls build her up a little bit. I know it's not the deepest division, but you want to build someone like that up, especially with the star power she's been gaining recently. So I don't think this is the smartest fight for the UFC to make because I think Felice is more experienced. 
And I think on the feet, she's going to give Paige a lot of problems. Like, I don't think it's going to go well for Paige in this one. And on the ground, I mean, if Paige is able to... Paige probably wants to get this fight to the ground. I mean, even if she does, I'm not sure if she's good enough on the ground to really finish Felice or put her in too much danger and keep it there. I think uh, this fight is going to probably take a good amount of place on the feet. And I think Felice is going to do what she does and pick Paige apart for a little bit. And I don't think it's going to go very well for Paige. And I'll go with Felice. All right. We'll move on to, for me, one of the most exciting fights on the card as well. Max Holloway versus Cub Swanson. Very, very important fight for both men. Because I believe that the performance, the win, does a lot for the winner. Now, I've said it before. Um... You know, with Chad Mendes winning his last fight against Ricardo, I don't believe he's up next for the title, not unless maybe Connor wins. Um, I believe this. If Jose wins, then, of course, Mendes needs uh, uh, another fight or even more maybe to get another shot, um, if that. What this fight really does for the winner is put him in a very good spot because that fight is still two months away, you know, or three months away. So... If the winner of this comes out looking great, in great shape, in great form, they can take Mendez next, and the winner of that can fight uh, next for the title because I believe Frank Yeager is next should he be favored. And there's a lot of obvious uh, things that need to go right <laughs> for this yeah, to happen. Yeah, a lot of ifs. Huh? A lot of ifs. Yeah, a lot of ifs. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, the, a win puts them in, in real prime position. Like, say Frankie loses to favor, then what you could do is make the winner of Holloway and Swanson – fight Mendez and the winner of that fights next for the title. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, you could do that either way probably. I'm sorry? You could probably do that either way. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You know, it's uh, it, either way, the winner of this could fight Mendez and find themselves right there on the, uh, on the cusp of the title shot. Cub Swanson was due it before the Frank Yeager fight in my opinion, but you know, um, what's done is done. And Swanson needs to come off of that loss to Frankie. And Max Holloway has won, what, four straight, four finishes? I think five straight with four finishes. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five straight with four finishes. Um, most recently beating Cole Miller at the beginning of this year. Um, and, man, he's just looked great. And he's still a young stud, man. He's, what, 23? <laughs> Holy shit. He's still 23 years old, taking on a very experienced guy in Cub Swanson. Um, now, I'm a fan of both guys, so this is very tough for me. But uh, I think I'm going to go with Cub Swanson winning this one here. I believe he still has that fire under him to really get in the gym, train every day, and get ready because he knows winning this fight could potentially catapult him to that title shot. Um, I think he's more ready for it than Max is right now. And in the end, I think he'll be able to uh, to to get the win over Max and find that fight with Chad Mendes. Who you got? Uh, I have Swanson as well. I again, experience plays a factor in this one. I Swanson has basically double the amount of fights as Holloway does, and um, I think if Swanson Swanson could be get this fight to the ground if, if he wanted to, where we've seen Holloway struggle in the past. It's been a while, but he has struggled on the ground in the past, and I think. Uh, Swanson's good enough on the feet to go with anyone, and Holloway might have some flashy moves. He has some flashy techniques on the feet, but I don't think he has the most knockout power, where Swanson has a lot of it. And if it stays on the feet, I think Swanson's going to be able to stay away from the flashy kicks and all that and then be able to land and maybe finish Holloway. I definitely see Swanson winning, though. Same. You know, I just believe that Swanson has done... Not not only I just think he's more ahead of the game than 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 Holloway is, even though Holloway has just looked tremendous thus far. Um, I just see Cub being more up to par in, in a high level fight like this than Max is right now, and, and that's and that's not to say Holloway can't ever get there. Like I said, he's only twenty three years old, man. He's still got so much time to really. Uh, yeah, he's not even in his prime yet. Yeah, not nowhere near it probably. I mean, he started in the UFC when he was twenty. Could believe that, which is crazy. Um, so this is this will still be a great fight. This has got fight of the night all over it, in my opinion, as well. So uh, I'm excited for this one. We'll move on to what is now the new co-main event: Jacare versus Kamozi. I mean, uh, 
not much to discuss. Yeah, bar- barring a, a barring a, a right hand from hell, uh, Kamozi has a lot going against him in this fight. He's already lost to Souza. I do think Kamozi probably lasts longer. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to like a decision. He's been in there once. He knows what to look for. He knows what to be prepared for. Um, but yeah, I, I can't deny Jacare probably going in there and being able to get the win again. So yeah, I think Jacare goes in, uh, probably finishes this fight, and uh, yeah, not much else to say. I think he finishes, <laughs> probably finishes in the first or second round. I don't really see it going much further than that. That. And uh, I don't know what he'll finish with. Maybe a submission. I could see him getting a TKO as well. But, uh, yeah, I don't think Kermosi has much of a chance at all. Oh, oh, well, oh. How rude. Anyway, this, <laughs> this would be uh, it would be crazy if Kermosi was able to get a, a win. What do you think that does for him? Kermosi? Yeah. If he was able to get a win? If he was able to get the win, yeah. Hell, I mean... That would that would be really crazy. I don't know exactly what it would do for him. It would put him in the top ten, probably a top fifteen, and just I don't know what they really do about that. They probably just match him up with someone. Maybe they give him the winner of Dalloway versus Bisping or something. I don't know. That makes sense. I actually like that. Yeah. I mean, the guy's lost four of his last five, and his last win was at a fight to win prize fighting championship against Jeremy Kimball. Never heard of either of them. Get Kimball. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he really has a shot at winning this fight. <laughs> Chris Kamozi, I could have sworn reading that he had won his last two in the first round. He won uh, on his shirt dog. It says he won his last fight in the first round. Before that, he lost to Rafael Natal, Bruno Santos, Lorenz Larkin, and uh, Jacare. Yeah, Wes Swoofert. He beat a guy named Wes Swoofert at Prize FC 8 on March 6th um, and beat oh, him in the weird. first it's round. Not, uh, it's not updated on his shirt. Oh, I'm reading it off of his uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, maybe he did. They yeah, so, did. yeah I, I mean, it was reported he won his last two in the first round, and this one, of course, also being in the first round. But you're right, against another guy that we haven't heard of no, before. No so. one knows. I haven't even heard of Prize Fighting Championship either, so... Doesn't really mean too much to me. Prize fight. You would think with a cool name like that, they'd be more well known. <laughs> Actually, like that prize UFC. That's pretty dope. Um, but yeah, I mean, he lost his last four in the UFC. Souza was the the kind of start to that ringer. But uh, you know, so yeah, we'll see how he does. I mean, he took he he was like on a four fight winning streak before that, and but they were against the they were nowhere near against the names that he fought. After, which was Jacare, Lorenz Larkin, Natal, those guys, you know. So, um, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, uh, it should be uh, exciting uh, to see what he could do. Um, either way, we get to see Jacare in action, and I'm excited about that most of all. So we'll move on now to the main event. Luke Rockhold versus Lyoto Machida, a very standout highlight uh, middleweight fight. Two of the best going at it. Um, Machida coming off that Weidman fight. Now, I believe Weidman made a, a, did a great job in being able to show uh, a, a great effective way of shutting Machida down now um, the way I see this fight going though I do believe Machida will be able to handle Luke standing uh, due to Luke's inability to really cut off Machida without leaving himself open to counters you know I figure he will plan to but Machida will probably want that I think I think Machida will be moving backwards a lot in this fight because of it and you know if Luke can hang in there and put out as good as he gets uh, at least, you know, near or equal amount of offense, he'll be able to take the decision. But I just don't see that happening, nor do I see him taking Machida down. I mean, Lyoto to me is kind of like Aldo-like when it comes to being able to, when it comes to being taken down. Up till now, only Weidman and Jones were ever really able to successfully do so with, a, with effective control and offense. But to me, Rockwell just doesn't have that type of wrestling, in my opinion. And so with that, I don't think this fight hits the ground too often. Uh, Machida's actually very tricky at taking guys down he's taken many guys down with uh, effective clinch trips and uh, and throws um i i believe that leoto is just going to have the right amount of offense and this, and in some ways i see luke's striking being able to play well into uh leoto's counter striking so i i see machida getting the the victory either with a very late late round stoppage or uh or the decision chris what do you got uh, I am having a hard time with this fight just because of how good both of these guys are. I mean, Rockhold's probably one of the most well-rounded guys in the division. And then we have Machida who could finish a fight in an instant. 
So, um, uh, I see the way uh, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, the way Weidman beat uh, Machida, a lot of it took place on the feet. We did see Weidman get the fight to the mat as well, which I don't think Rockhold would be able to do as easily as he's not the wrestler Weidman is. But I see him using a bit of Weidman's strategy in those early rounds, being able to cut Machida off, use his distance a little bit, do straight punches, incorporate some of his kicks in there too because he's a better kicker than Weidman is. And I think that could help him out a lot, but I can also see him leaving himself open as he did in the Vitor fight and getting clipped with something. But, um, yeah, Rockhold is probably also a decently bigger guy. He's probably around the same size as Weidman in terms of weight and height. They're around the same size, and Machida's a little bit smaller. I think he can use that to advantage. I don't think Machida's going to be able to get him down. If he does, I think we'll see Rockhold pop back up or try to uh, reverse the position. Um, as for Machida... He likes to, we, we know what Machida likes to do. He likes to stay back, wait for his, uh, to pick his, uh, to pick, he throws, uh, he picks his shots. He likes to, he'll throw that one kick that'll finish the fight or that one punch. But a lot of times we see that when guys start rushing in on him. I don't think Rockhold's gonna rush in on him. And I don't think, I don't, I like, we saw Ryan Bader get knocked out by Machida rushing in. We saw Dalloway get knocked out by Machida rushing in. So, I think Rockhold's going to try to play it a little bit safer, do things a little bit differently than those guys did. And, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Rockhold by decision. I wouldn't be too surprised if either guy won, but I hope for a good fight. I'm going to go with Rockhold just barely. Just barely. Um, this fight's going to be awesome. Oh, there's so many fights on this card. This card's great. I can't wait, man. Saturday can't come fast enough, man. And so when it does, it's going to be amazing. Fun card all around. I mean, you could pick your pick or choose. There's so many fights to choose from. I mean, you could just split this card amongst other cards, and it would make them great, you know. So, um, can't wait for this Saturday. Uh, congratulations are in order again to Phil Davis, who we will be going to Bellator. Hopefully, we see what happens with the Nate Diaz, Matt Brown fiasco. Fight fans, um, we are now available on SoundCloud. Chris, you know more about that than I do. He got the hookup. Let us know what that's about. Uh, yeah, you can, I mean, a lot of people use SoundCloud. You can get it on your phone for free. You can use it on the computer. It's easy to listen to. I mean, it's basically very similar on the phone aspect to Stitcher where you can download it if you want to. I believe you can. And you can just listen to it straight from your phone. You can listen to it on your computer. I mean, it's it's just another way to listen to the podcast. If And I know a lot of people use SoundCloud, whether it's for music. Some people use it for podcasts. A lot more podcasts are getting on there. So, yeah, if you use SoundCloud, you got a new way to listen to us if you want to use that. We want to thank SoundCloud for hooking us up. We now have another uh, audience to, to play for, and we appreciate that. And, of course, Stitcher and iTunes are still, uh, are still uh, very welcome to um, – you know, we appreciate the help that we're getting from them, and we appreciate the fan base we're getting from you guys, especially Stitcher, um, especially YouTube, especially everything. You know, we appreciate you guys listening. Um, check out this card this weekend. Check out our page, Facebook page, for uh, all the highlights and finishes you'll see uh, as quickly as we can get them on there uh, from this Saturday on UFC on Fox 15. Be sure to check them out. Some of the best fights of the month will probably go down this Saturday, April 15th or April 18th. I'm sorry. And, uh, man, can't wait. We also want to thank Marcin Health for coming on again. Great host, or, I mean, great guest, and we uh, hope to have him back on again sometime soon. Chris, sign off, homie. Yeah, guys, we really appreciate everyone listening. I was a little bit out of it this podcast. I don't think I did my best, but I did. I tried. I made an attempt. Uh, thank you guys again for just listening and keep coming back and just helping us grow so just share the podcast with all your friends family whatever and we really do appreciate it thank you later appreciate you guys hit us up on uh twitter at nick the phantom or at chris paliuka or at sports of anarchy uh you can hit us up on all three of those outlets or of course go to our facebook page mma discussion where it is happening you want to get on some of the best mma debates i'm always on there um so is chris hit us up later guys thank you appreciate you